U.S. and COINTELPRO programs, and that's just FBI. The CIA was doing the same thing during the same period of time, but there's been no confession or revelation of what they were doing, nor has there been a publication of the lists of the names of the, the groups that were targeted. So if you had trouble in one of your groups, uh, you can only guess if it was because of FBI or CI disruption or just pure and simply human foible. Drugs. Every major area of operation in which the CI has worked has left behind a major functioning drug cartel. Again, this is a major subject we could talk about all night. I'll just mention it. We can go back to it in detail if you like in the question and answer. The French Connection grew directly from the OSS, the CIA's predecessors, getting Lucky Luciano out of prison and funding him to activate the Mafia to work with the U.S. forces during the war and then right after the war to break up the strikes on the docks in Marseille. The Golden Triangle in Southeast Asia grew directly out of our covert policies there. Before it had been run by French intelligence with the Corsican Mafia, we took over with our Air America and civil air transport planes flying in arms to our allies, flying back out with the heroin. The first target being U.S. GIs during the Vietnam War, the second target being the United States itself. The Golden Crescent. Afghanistan, of course, is the largest covert operation the CIA has run to date. We understand in terms of the hundreds of millions of dollars it's cost going on for over a year. And sure enough, after about six years, the Golden Crescent in that area becomes the largest source of heroin in the world today. And then again, to mention the Medellin Colombian cocaine cartel getting the big surge of its activities during the 80s, the importation of cocaine. Uh, in 1981, according to, to the DEA, being 1,000 kilograms, jumping to 35,000 kilograms, a little over 35 tons in 1987, while we have, again, the findings of the Kerry Committee, the findings of investigative journalists, the massive overlapping between the Contra program and, and the Medellin smuggling drugs into this country. The beauty of it being that the Contras the people who were running the Contra program for the CIA were eminently corruptible, and the planes would fly down with arms and come back to our National Guard and Air Force bases where they had CIA clearances. So they could lay, land at Homestead and then have passes to you know, load onto the trucks and clear the bases without being stopped. And when they would be stopped, or someone like Leon Kellner, the attorney down in, in Florida, trying to prosecute, Word would come down from the attorney general's office, from the attorney general's office, uh, to tell them that it was national security that they should not try to prosecute this thing. Even Adolfo Calero's brother-in-law uh, caught uh, involved in in the importation of 200 uh, kilograms of cocaine into this country and not prosecuted again because they said it involved U.S. national security, namely the destabilization of Nicaragua. See for yourselves. If you'd like to get your information from video, see Guns, Drugs, and the CIA, the Frontline PBS show, or read for yourselves. Read The Great Heroin Coup by Henry Kruger. Read The Iran Contra Connection by Peter Dale Scott. Read The Politics of Heroin in Southeast Asia by Al McCoy. Read The Cocaine Wars by Paul Eddy. Read Out of Control by Leslie Coburn. Read Mafia Kingfish by John Davis. Read The Senator Must Die by Bob Morrow. Eighty percent of the people in this country have been polled for some time when they're pinned down. Do you believe that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone in killing John Kennedy or was there a conspiracy? Eighty percent of the people have been saying there had to be a conspiracy. But we were saying this without having the facts, without being able to say what kind of a conspiracy 